Hello everyone, my name is John Kraft. This is the third video in my series on building a basic drone tracking radar example. We're going through this step-by-step, -step, tackling a different radar topic in each video. In the last video, we explored CW radar, and we did a little experiment with a fan, and we could measure the velocity of the fan with the CW radar, and that was very interesting, but we can't get range from a continuous sine wave. So how do we get range from that kind of setup? The way that we do it is we introduce some kind of modulation into our transmit signal. So that's what we'll explore in this video. And to introduce that topic, let me first show you an overview of all the different types of radar. It's this very nice chart from the book, Principles of Modern Radar. And you can see that radar classifications are divided up into CW and pulsed. Those are two classifications that we talked about last week. But within those two categories, there are many ways to do radar. And we've only talked about fixed frequency so far. And that's kind of unfair because a purely fixed frequency continuous wave radar is almost never used. It's just too simple, it's too limiting. We have better ways to do a CW or a pulsed radar. And the most popular of these is the linear frequency modulated waveform. You may have heard it called a chirp or LFM waveform, or heard the term FMCW, frequency modulated continuous waveform. So let me explain the basics behind an FMCW radar. This is what an FMCW radar looks like. Most commonly, we use an LFM waveform. That's what's shown here. LFM stands for linear frequency modulation. So it just means that the rate of frequency change is constant. And so you get a waveform that looks something like what's shown. You can see that it starts out with a low frequency and then it goes higher in frequency. And it is a continuous signal. So there is always something being output from the transmitter. And this requires a separate antenna for transmit and a separate antenna for receive. Here's a nice animation of FMCW radar from my friends Joe Tarkoff and Patrick Walsh. You can see exactly how the range gets converted into the beat frequency. So we have some transmit waveform in red, and that outputs some frequency ramp over time. And then we receive back some frequency waveform, and that's shown in green. And by comparing the two ramps, we get the beat frequency. Now I've greatly exaggerated how much time separation there is between the transmit and receive waveforms. For our demos, there will only be a few tens of nanoseconds of difference. But that difference will be enough to produce a small beat frequency. And that beat frequency will be directly correlated to the time delay of our received waveform. That allows us to convert the beat frequency into range. And here's the equations that govern this. This is for a triangular shaped LFM chirp. We commonly do a sawtooth shape, but a triangular shape is nice because we can use the difference between the upslope and downslope beat frequencies as one method to get the target velocity. So those are the equations for range and velocity from a linearly modulated chirp. For range resolution, it is still going to be the speed of light divided by two times the bandwidth. Remember, that's the equation that we used for the pulsed radar case in the previous video. But for FMCW radar, our bandwidth is the difference between our starting and our ending frequencies. The higher the bandwidth, the better the range resolution. These waveforms are generally digitally created and digitally received. Then we compare the transmit to the receive using a matched filter, and that gives us the beat frequency. So this means that the higher the bandwidth, the higher the sample rate that we need on the ADCs and DACs. I put some examples on this slide. So at a one gigahertz sample rate, we're at about a 15 centimeter range resolution. And that's probably something like the 809081 or 809082 from analog devices. But if you needed something smaller than that, then you're in some variant of the new 809084. So FMCW provides us with a method to get great range resolution and for reasonable power and without having to worry about pulse length. But it does require higher data rate converters. But there is a way around the higher data rate converter requirement, and that is something called stretch LO processing. In stretch processing, we apply the ramp to the LO of the mixers. Now, generally this is done in the analog domain. That's where this technique has the advantage. And the key here is that the same LO must go to the transmit and to the receive mixers. So then when the receive radar waveform comes back, it gets that chirp subtracted out and all you are left with is the beat frequency relative to your original transmit waveform. And that beat frequency is small. For us, it will be around 10 kilohertz per meter of range. So we don't need a high bandwidth receiver to process it. And that's why we can use Pluto, even though our chirp bandwidth is gonna be something like 500 megahertz. However, stretch LL processing does have some limitations. Uh, it has a limited range window. Uh, so that means that we need to know the approximate target range through some other method. Also, both the range and the Doppler are gonna impact the IF frequency. So we'll often need some other method to separate those two things out. And there's a variety of ways and waveform shapes to do this. 
Okay, so now let's dig into how we set this ramping waveform. The ADF 4159 has special programmable ramping modes that will do this chirp for us. There's four types of waveforms that you will mainly use, though there are others that are also possible with the 4159. So I'll show you those four waveforms now, and then I'll give you a little snippet of the Python code so that you can program them for yourself. This first example is a sawtooth ramp. It is a very common, probably the most common ramp of all. And you can see the Python settings to program that into the ADF 4159. In this next example, we add a delay in between the sawtooth ramps. And here you can see that purple ramp complete signal. That's something that's generated automatically by the ADF 4159 at the completion of each ramp. And that can be useful for synchronizing chirps. And here's a triangular ramp with a delay. We saw the equations for triangular ramps. They produce a, a clever means to obtain velocity, basically by using the difference in frequencies between the upslope and the downslope. And then the final example here is a clipped triangular waveform. And this one's interesting because it gives you two places where the frequency is constant. And so you can get a Doppler shift measurement at those places. And for all these waveforms, you can measure what the VCO is doing by just measuring its V2 voltage uh, with a standard oscilloscope. That's what those orange traces are. VCO stands for Voltage Controlled Oscillator. So it takes the voltage at its V-tune pin and converts that into some frequency. So by measuring that voltage, you'll know the shape of the VCO's output frequency. So let's go through a quick example now. Say our ramp bandwidth was 500 megahertz and our chirp width was 500 microseconds. Then we can use those equations to show that we will need a beat frequency of 6.7 kilohertz per meter of range. So for every meter away that the target is, we should see an additional frequency shift of 6.7 kilohertz. And to implement this, we really only need to make a few changes to the program that I shared last week. Basically, we just tell the ADF 4159 to make a ramping waveform instead of the constant frequency output that we had used for that CW radar fan demo. So first we tell it what our ramping bandwidth is. Then we say how many frequency steps we wanted to use. That's this num steps variable. And we set the total time for each complete chirp in the ramp time variable. And finally, we just tell the ADF 4159 that we want a continuous triangular modulation. And that's really all that we need to do. You can find the complete code at the GitHub link that's shown. You can see how nice and human readable this Pi ADI IIO program is. Again, that is thanks to Travis Collins and Mark Thorin and Michael Henrik and, and many others at ADI. So we can try that program out for ourselves. If you just go to that GitHub link, you can see this program. It's called fmcwradarwaterfall.py. And if we scroll down a bit, you can see the settings that we were just going over for the uh, configuring the ADF 4159. So the output frequency, 12.1 gig, the bandwidth, 500 megahertz, the ramp time, 500 microseconds. So those match the, that uh, equation example that we just ran through. Okay, so now we're finally ready to try out our phaser radar with this new FMCW transmit waveform. And to do that, uh, I have a special little invention that my friend Dustin Weaver and I put together with an Arduino and a Raspberry Pi and a stepper motor and things like that. Uh, it's basically just moves this, this corner reflector back and forth in a repeatable way. It makes a lot of these radar experiments easier to do. It makes it easier to debug a program when you have a consistently moving object that you can, that you can use to adjust the parameters in the program and stuff. Um, you can also make it operate in like a step mode. So I might use it later on for something like SAR imaging projects where we, we take range at, at all these different steps. Uh, so let me, let me turn this guy on here and plug it in. So it just does one kind of calibration sweep to, to measure the length. This is about one meter in length here. So it'll do that and then it'll just move back and forth uh, indefinitely. So when this launches, we see the 100 kilohertz, that's our baseband frequency. And then we see this beat frequency from the radar's corner reflector. So this is the corner reflector that's moving back and forth on my target trolley. And then on the waterfall plot, you can kind of clearly see that intensity pattern kind of show up. And the difference between uh, these two beat frequency points here is about seven kilohertz. Uh, and that's, 
That's what we calculated for one meter distance. Remember the target trolley is about one meter in length. And we can also plot distance on the x-axis, just using those equations to convert frequency, beat frequency to distance. So you can see uh, uh, distance plotted there. And I can change the trip bandwidth. So right now we're at 500 megahertz. But if we go to half of that, let's go to something around 250 megahertz. 250. And now we change that. And we see that instantly our beat, fre beat frequencies get divided in half. So the low point is now half, way closer to 100 kilohertz. And, and uh, uh, so is the high point here. So this is an indication, right? We're losing that range resolution by using a 250 megahertz chirp instead of a 500 megahertz chirp. The other sliders here, we can control the waterfall intensity levels. These help us to zoom in on the spectrum that we want to see. So this is what it looks like with kind of no, no intensity levels set on the waterfall plot. You see all the little little spurs from the from the frequency plot there. And if we kind of uh, use this to cut off the lower end ones and then uh, use this high level to accentuate uh, the ones that we want to see, we can do that. Now, we're going to find a much better way to do this in the next video when we talk about CIFAR processing. But for right now, I just use the waterfall intensity levels to better highlight uh, the path of the corner reflector. And then finally, on this little steering knob here, you can, we haven't talked about the phased array beam forming piece of the phaser board, but you can steer that receive beam. So if we steer it away from the target trolley, then we, we no longer see it moving anymore. If we bring it back to mechanical bore site, which is zero degrees, then you see it again. And if you bring it, you know, steer it the other way, uh, you also don't see anything. So this is a triangular waveform that we're applying here. And you can see that if I just slide this frequency plot over, so our center baseband frequency is at 100 kilohertz. So the beat frequencies are going to be centered around 100 kilohertz. And you can see the up and the down beat frequencies from that triangular ramp. Uh, and here's here they are on the waterfall plot too. You can see them. So you can see both of those beat frequencies, the, the up and the down. Now, these beat frequencies are very similar, uh, just reflected around the 100 kilohertz point. And they're very similar because our velocity is very, very slow. If our velocity was faster, then those equations would kick in and, and we could start to measure that velocity if we subtracted this upper beat frequency from the lower beat frequency. And in fact, if you want to see what the sawtooth chirp looks like, the sawtooth chirp is not going to have the lower beat frequency here. So we can, we can do that easily enough. We just go back to our program. And we say continuous sawtooth instead of continuous triangular. And run that again. So now when we look at these beat frequencies, there's 100 kilohertz again. But now we only see, we only see this peak here for the, uh, the upper beat frequency. We don't see that lower beat frequency peak. There's some other stuff moving around here, but these are reflections from the small room that I'm in. They're not the uh, they're not the main path of the radar. Okay, so I hope that that was a helpful look into FMCW radars. It's an incredibly powerful technique and pretty much the foundation for most modern radars. This idea of modulating the transmit pattern uh, and then using that to improve your range resolution. So, but when we did that, right, we saw all these little spurs and stuff uh, pop up because everything in this room is reflecting and, and it's all showing up uh, in the FMCW uh, beat frequency plot. We didn't see that when we did the fan because we were only uh, returning things that were actually moving. But in FMCW, all these stationary things start popping up. 
So in the next video, we're going to look at a means to reduce all of that clutter. It's a very popular algorithm called CIFAR. And so be sure to uh, be sure to subscribe if you want to check that video out. Thanks for watching.